we don't have high paid lobbyists. We don't have a lot of money. Here are some of the things we do have. The most people living with HIV and AIDS, the most poverty, the most sexually transmitted infections. Deep South is a feature length documentary about AIDS in uh, the southern United States and it features three storylines of, of everyday people trying to really survive in an environment that makes it very difficult for them to survive in. You know, they, there are no resources, uh, there's limited support, and this is a story of how just regular people go beyond the statistics and just try to build a life for themselves. I had come across some statistics in the South that were really alarming about HIV, that you know, African-American women, AIDS is one of the leading causes of death, that the American South has 50% higher infection rates, and I was shocked because you know, I thought that HIV AIDS was something that was done, you know, that we had conquered, you know, in terms of the, our domestic epidemic, and that it was a problem um, that really occurred globally and not uh, nationally or, or domestically. One of our main goals of doing this film was not to do just another film on AIDS. It was the 30th anniversary of AIDS, so we knew that, uh, you know, there would be TV specials, there would be other films, there would be web documentaries, there would be a lot of people covering the story, and rightly so. You know, it's a big story, it's 30 years, we just didn't want to be another one of those stories. And so uh, that was really an impetus for us to really think about how do we tell the story creatively. When people watch the film, they often uh, talk about the graveyard scene and how did you guys get Josh to go into the graveyard and, and we always say well that's just what he does he's really interested in these tombstones and he's really interested not in death but really the lives that these people lived so when we decided to go and shoot Josh in the grave uh, in the graveyards um, it, it was it was really natural it was not too, actually, it's not far from my birthday. Well, except a year. <laughs> the character of Josh is this young man who has HIV, who's gay, who lives in a place where you cannot be gay or have HIV. You can simply cannot. It's the big Bible belt, and, and so he's living in a very isolating uh, environment. And I wanted to create that feel of isolation, and so we shot it in that way. The second storyline with Tammy and Monica, they were trying to create a sense of community out of these pockets of solo folks. And they, they were trying to create a community where they were bringing people from Texas, Louisiana, you know, uh, Mississippi, Florida, all together. And, and, and so we wanted to shoot it in a way that kind of uh, played off their energy in trying to bring those, those people together. And the last one, uh, last storyline was Kathy, and she was in constant motion. She's on the road 120 days a year trying to raise funds for AIDS. And so we wanted to shoot her in motion constantly, whether in a car, speaking very quickly at a conference, walking down halls, she was in constant motion. The structure of the film um, lends itself to what we're trying to say in the film, which is that HIV is not what she think it is, it's really about the um, crumbling social infrastructure in these parts. So where I find high rates of HIV, I find a whole host of social, um, negative social ills. So HIV is really just kind of my GPS into these, into these really fragile communities. My family is kind of anti-homo, I guess you can say. It's like, as long as you're doing it in private, I don't care. But when they see it, it bothers them. Doolin Tu was the director of photography and producer on this project, um, and, and this is actually the first time Dew and I have worked together. Uh, he used to actually be my professor when I was a student at uh, Columbia's Journalism School. Students keep in touch with me all the time. They call up and, you know, I got a new job or I got this promotion, I'm working on this project. And she started calling and, and talking about this one specific project that she wanted to do on AIDS. And, and, and I believe the kernel, the, 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 the first moment was that she read a stat about the rise of AIDS in the South. And I said, well, you know, you, you got to go down there and you got to, you know, you can't report a story by reading the newspaper. You got to go to where the story is. And I suggested that she go, not thinking that she actually would because who, who just goes to the south? And Lisa went to the south and she drove around and she drove something like 10,000 miles in the south and she came back, she goes, there's a real story here. I said, that's great, you know, and she goes, I think I wanna do a documentary. I said, that's fantastic, you should. And she goes, uh, would you help me on with it? And I said, um, it's great that you want my help, but you know what, like these projects cost quite a bit of money and 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 you know you know I'm glad to be involved but you know you have to figure out your funding how you're gonna support yourself how you're gonna really make this happen because a lot of ideas die without funding and so she said okay 
And so she went and she, you know, a couple of weeks later, I got an email with a, you know, a photo of a check in it. And she had gone out and raised money for this film. And she said, now you, now you got to do it with me. And I said, all right, let's do this. And it's very natural in this field to go from mentor, mentee to actually collaborative partners. It happens all the time. You know, we, we share this base knowledge where, you know, these are the, the ideals that we, we want to hold, uphold in journalism. The, the, this is the way that you should report. This is the way that uh, you want to aim uh, to make your storytelling. And I think, you know, Columbia Journalism provides a really great outlet for, for allowing students to grow to the point that they're, they're professionals and we see them as professionals the second they graduate. And we see them professionals in a way that we would, you know, pr collaborate and, and build large projects like this with them. We walk around with smiles on our face. On the inside, we're screaming.